When former President Fidel V. Ramos passed on, he left a legacy unmatched that some of his peers call him among the best leaders the Philippines has had. How does one do justice to the life of a remarkable person? A man who, despite occupying the highest post in the land, lived his life with discretion, with humility, and dignity. We owe our democracy to him. A decorated military man, Ramos's bold move in February 1986 to defect from the administration of his second cousin, then President Ferdinand Marcos Sr., resulted in the success of the bloodless 1986 Eds Uprising, which ended the dictator's rule after 20 long years. But as his colleagues say, restoring democracy is one thing, preserving it is another. Serving as former President Corazon Aquino's military chief and later defense secretary, Steady Eddie, as people call him, was unfazed by coup attempts. He called for a conference a closed-door conference of major service commanders and the chief of constabulary and directed that they support his stand to defend democracy and the core government from a regime change. In 1992, his unwavering loyalty was rewarded by Corey's coveted endorsement for the presidency. He won, even when the retired general was not a natural crowd pleaser. But FVR was a soldier, and he acted like one on stage. That was really pretty horrible if you were trying to get votes. My mom said, oh my God, he's so stiff. I can arguably say, and many may agree that he was probably more prepared for the presidency than many who tried their best to become president through a political process. When he assumed the top post in Malacanang, he hit the ground running. His cabinet officials were the first to admit it was difficult to keep pace. Where we would wake up at 4 a.m. and depart from Villamore Air Base at around 6 and then returned by around 10 p.m. And you'd think we would go home by then? No, he'd still have a, uh, a meeting to wrap up things. In Pangasinan, I vividly recall how he refused the social meeting and lunch that the congressman had prepared for our team. And in a stern voice, he said, Hindi kami nagpunta rito para kumain at pag, para magpagsosyalan sa inyo. And thus we left. Hindi kami kumain. Gutom na gutom talaga ako na pero na tayo magawa. As president, Ramos was conscious of his administration's image in the media. He would read newspapers early in the morning and immediately seek clarification from his team about the issues surrounding his government. And he said, do you know about this fund mess? That is reported here in uh, the bulletin that happened in, in Tanay, in the training command in Tanay. And I said, I'm sorry, sir. I have not read it yet. And he said, God damn, you better buy newspapers and read them. And make sure that you, you answer it before noon time. And so for dutifully, I said, yes, sir. And that was the lesson from that point on. He never caught me again uh, sleeping with respect to uh, news reports. He was an inspirational leader. A nor red ink instruction, nor early dawn calls, meant you were doing all right. His people say they miss the FVR way of getting things done. We learned all about completed staff work, that's CSW, and another acronym of NLT, not later than, for timely compliance. 
And of course, the sign signature thumbs up to signify kaya natin ito. He asked his cabinet to exercise teamwork. We had t-shirts with Team Philippines. I still keep that Team Philippines. In the later part of my political career, when I joined meetings among some bureaucrats, I miss the way President Ramos would conduct the meetings with precision, with uh, full knowledge, with a full grasp of what was happening. But more than just a boss, they say FVR was a lifelong friend. He was the skydiver who would jump out of the plane with his parachute, but at the same time carrying a box of beer for his boys on the ground. When I had my terrible cancer surgery, my husband looks out our window and he goes, we had no Lala move there at that time yet. He says, what's that thing doing with the uniform? I said, huh? And it was a book from him and a note. And it was a book entitled, A Purpose Driven Life. And it resonated with me. And because and now I could see why he was, even after the presidency, as you call him, a trustee of the nation. Straightforward, no nonsense, direct to the point. Some say Ramos may have been underappreciated during his time. But decades later, they hope that his death at the age of 94 will reignite public interest about the man who will go down in history as a competent leader, one with an exemplary work ethic and a working understanding of democracy. Dwight De Leon, Rappler, Tagig.